Hello students, welcome back to the session. So in the previous video we have covered or we have learnt what do you mean by de Broglie waves or matter waves and we have also obtained the expression for the uh, de Broglie wavelength for any material particle which is moving with a certain velocity. So the expression for that particular uh, de Broglie wavelength of material particle in motion will be given by the equation lambda is equal to h divided by m into v. So and we have also learned that in the characteristics of de Broglie wavelength that is a macro for the there is a matter waves associated with the matter particles cannot be observed or it can be easily measurable. It cannot be easily be measurable. Why? Because see if I consider any material particle which is having a mass of 1 kg okay, and if this particular material particle is moving with a velocity of 1 meter per second. So if I calculate the de Broglie wavelength associated with this particular material particle in motion, so it will be obtained as, see we know the value of Planck's constant as 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 and mass is 1 kg and velocity is 1 meter per second. So lambda will be approximately 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 second. So what is the order of the wavelength that you are getting? So it is 10 to the power of minus 34 meter. So it is very small, very, very small. So therefore, it will be practically difficult for us to measure the de Broglie waves associated with the macro objects, even though they are in motion, even though, uh, I mean, the concept of a de Broglie wavelength is satisfied, but still we will be unable to measure the de Broglie wavelength of the macro objects. Why? Because the wavelength will be very small. Okay. So, if I consider any atomic or subatomic particles, that is if I consider the micro particle for example, uh, then uh, let us see what will be the order of the de Broglie wavelength. So, let us consider electron which is having a mass of uh, 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. Okay. And let us consider this particular electron is moving at a velocity of 1 meter per second. So now if I calculate the de Broglie wavelength associated with the material particle, again I will use the equation lambda is equal to h divided by mv and lambda is equal to 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31. So if I leave the 6.625 divided by 9.1, if I just simplify the order of the magnitudes, okay, so it will be of the order of 10 to the power of minus 3, okay, so which is easily measurable, right. So uh, that is lambda is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 means, so it can, it is a little bit measurable, it is a little bit convenient to measure this particular order of magnitude for the wavelength, okay. When you compare with the macro objects, so we have uh, that is for micro objects, so there is a uh, atomic and subatomic particles, we can measure or it is easy to measure the order of the wavelength of de Broglie wavelength. So hence we say that in our daily life, it is little bit difficult to observe uh, the matter waves associated with the material particle in daily life. Why? Because the uh, wavelength, that is the de Broglie wavelength associated with them will be very uh, small. So therefore, it will be very difficult for us to observe the de Broglie wavelength uh, in our daily life, okay. But for subatomic and atomic particles, it, it is of the order of measurable uh, range. So therefore, we can measure the de Broglie uh, wavelength associated with the micro particles, got it. So now we have uh, theoretically obtained, that is uh, Louis de Broglie theoretically proposed that any material particle in motion will be associated with waves. So this we have uh, uh, learnt only theoretically, but we also need experimental proof uh, that is whenever any material particle is in motion, it will be associated with certain waves. So this uh, was done by, that is the experimental proof for this was uh, basically done by G.P. Thompson and then later on another uh, two persons, Davis and Jenmer, uh, conducted two different experiments to explain that is uh, the de Broglie uh, wave concept or that is the de Broglie hypothesis uh, uh, 
these two experiments gave the experimental proof for the existence of the matter waves uh, that are associated with the material particle in motion. So now let us uh, continue uh, this session uh, with another uh, important experiment uh, that is what we call as an uh, G.P. Thomson experiment. So just now I said that is uh, the experimental proof for the wave nature or the de Broglie uh, hypothesis uh, experimentally was first explained by G.P. Thomson. Uh, this experiment, hence the name uh, given as the G.P. Thomson experiment. So what is the ex I mean, principle behind this? See, whenever any material particle is in motion, so it will be associated with the material, uh, that is, it will be associated with matter waves or it will be associated with waves. So this is the de Broglie hypothesis. So now, and we have also seen that for macro objects, it is little bit difficult to measure the de Broglie wavelength, but for atomic and subatomic particles, it is easy to measure the order of the wavelength that is the de Broglie wavelength. Okay. So now here, by using the atomic and subatomic particles, let us try to prove that the material particles, that is electron, proton, neutron, are associated with certain uh, waves there is nothing but when they are in motion they will be uh, associated with certain wave nature. So for this let us look into the experimental arrangement of the uh, G.P. Thomson experiment. So there is basically we need the emitter so there is a source okay, of electrons so which is also known as the cathode. So cathode is the filament okay. when it is heated electrically it emits electrons. So now here the cathode will be emitting the electrons whenever this cathode is heated with the, uh, I mean whenever it is heated electrically. Now the electrons which are emitted by the cathode, okay, so are attracted towards the anode, so which is taken in the form of a small slab and a small potential difference will be applied such that the electrons which are emitted by the cathode are attracted towards the anode and a fine hole is made in this uh, anode so where a collimated beam of electrons can come out of this anode. So now since we have applied a very small uh, potential difference for this anode so the electrons are just attracted but they are not accelerated. Now we need to make the electrons to get accelerated so therefore we will make the electrons to move towards the cylinder that is AC where a suitable potential difference will be applied such that whenever the electrons are accelerated okay, with a certain potential difference we they obtain or they acquire sufficient de Broglie that is they acquire the de Broglie wavelength. Okay. Now the electrons which are coming out of this cylinder are made to pass through or made to fall on this particular gold foil F which is of the order of uh, thickness 10 to the power of minus 7 to 10 to the power of minus 8 meter. Okay, so there is the electrons which are being accelerated by the cylinder AC are made to fall on this gold foil F which is having a thickness of 10 to the power of minus 7 to 10 to the power of minus 8 meter. So the electrons which are coming out of this particular filament F are made to fall on the photographic plate P or they are made to fall on the fluorescent screen. So if you place a fluorescent screen immediately you can see that uh, I mean what is happening the uh, I mean whenever the electrons which are accelerated are coming out of this uh, gold foil immediately you can see on the fluorescent screen uh, if not if you keep the uh, photographic plate. So there we can observe after developing this photographic plate we can observe the uh, what is uh, what is happening uh, after the incident of this electrons on the filament. Okay. So now if I develop this photographic plate okay, we can see that is we are getting a circular rings which is similar to that of the diffraction pattern. So remember this point so which is very important uh, whenever we are developing this photographic plate or if you observe on the fluorescent screen here we are able to see the diffraction pattern. So which particular I mean when we can uh, I mean say that we are when we can expect the diffraction pattern that is diffraction pattern is exhibited only by waves okay so remember that so now what you are using here you are using electrons so these electrons which are accelerated so at certain potential difference so they acquire a uh, de Broglie waves or de Broglie I mean these waves which are coming out of this particular filament uh, are undergoing a diffraction pattern hence you are getting this pattern which is similar to the diffraction pattern of light. 
so on the on the development of the photographic plate here we are seeing concentric rings right so which is similar to the diffraction pattern which is obtained due to light okay so if you take off this gold foil or in the absence of the gold foil there is just a bright spot which appears on the screen or on the photographic plate so if there is a presence of the gold foil then we are able to see this as concentric circular rings so this is the experimental evidence that is uh, whenever the material particle are in motion so definitely they will be associated with wave now let us look into the uh, theoretical part of this particular experiment so that is see uh, we know that the de broglie wavelength associated with any electron or with any charged particle is given by the equation uh, for electron it is given by 12.27 divided by square root of v Armstrong. So how did we get this equation? We remember that lambda is equal to h divided by square root of 2 into m into um, q into v, right? So where v is the potential difference, q is the charge of the charged particle and m is the mass of the charged particle. If I substitute the value of Planck's constant and if I substitute the mass of electron and if I substitute the charge of electron and if I simplify this for electron okay you get the value as 12.27 divided by square root of v Armstrong. so now let us consider any some nth circular ring okay uh, of let the radius of this n circular ring uh, is having a radius of uh, r okay now let us consider that this photographic plate okay on this photographic plate is at a distance of L from the plane of this particular uh, gold foil okay and D is the distance between the gold atoms in the gold foil okay so or D is the distance between the atoms in the crystal of the gold foil okay now the incident beam AD is made to pass through the film at point B now after diffraction that is B P dash is the reflected beam or the diffracted beam okay now let O P dash okay so this particular point O which is the midpoint of the diffraction pattern okay so O P dash is the radius okay or uh, from the diagram O P dash will be the distance R or if you compare the circular ring it will be equal to R okay so there is a radius of the nth circular link and let b o be equal to l so which is nothing but the distance between the point where the uh, electron will strike the photographic plate and the photographic plate okay so this is a gold foil and this is a photographic plate and the distance between them is equal to uh, l okay so in the triangle so that is in triangle p dash b o so this will be equal to 2 into theta and we have already made the assumption that O P dash is equal to R and uh, B P will be equal to L. So in this triangle, in the diagram, we can write uh, in triangle P dash B O, P dash B O. So this full angle will be equal to theta. Okay. Now, so where uh, what theta will be known as the glancing angle. Okay. So theta will be known as glancing angle. And from Bragg's law, we have that is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda. Okay, and uh, from figure in triangle p dash b o tan 2 theta will be equal to opposite by adjacent. So that is. P O P dash divided by B O. So that is tan 2 theta is equal to R divided by L. Okay. So now for small angles of theta, for small angles of theta, tan 2 theta will be approximately equal to 2 theta. So therefore 2 theta is equal to R divided by L or we can write theta is equal to r divided by l okay now sorry r divided theta is equal to r divided by 2l if i take this 2 to the denominator so we know that there is Bragg's law we have a 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda 
again here for small angles of theta for small angles of theta sin theta is approximately equal to theta so therefore 2d theta is equal to n lambda so if i substitute the value of theta in this particular equation it will be 2d into r divided by 2l which is equal to n into lambda or if i simplify this 2 and 2 gets cancelled i can write this equation as d into capital r divided by small l which is equal to n into lambda or if i take this n to the denominator lambda will be equal to d into capital r divided by n into small l so this will be the expression for the wavelength okay of the de broglie waves associated with the material particle that is the electron when it is accelerated with a certain potential difference so i'll take this as equation uh, ea and we know that whenever the electron is accelerated by a certain potential difference the de broglie waves associated with the material particle will be given by the equation 12.27 divided by square root of v armstrong so if you substitute the value with which or at what potential difference you are accelerating the electron now you'll get certain value of lambda now if i substitute the value of d that is the distance between the uh, two atoms in a gold crystal and the distance between the gold foil and the photographic plate small l and the radius of the nth uh, circular ring that you are considered if you are considering the first circular ring then we will be substituting the value of that radius if you are taking the second ring then the radius of the radius of that particular uh, ring will be substituted so if i compare the values of this particular lambda and this lambda they are in good agreement with each other so this explains that the whenever material particle that is electrons okay are being accelerated with a certain potential difference the de broglie wavelength that you get is experimentally equal to the de broglie wavelength that is obtained with the gp thomson experiment so gp thomson experiment so gave the exact picture that is or uh, it gave an experimental proof that the material particle whenever they are in motion it will be associated with a uh, material particle okay hope you have understood if you have any doubts uh, please comment in the comment box okay uh, so thank you very much uh, we'll be meeting with another experiment that is the davison germer experiment in our uh, next upcoming uh, video thank you